Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Everybody, John Radigan here once again with my man Nate Newton and another episode of Let Me Tell You Something, baby. Yes, sir. Glad to see you, Rad. Oh, Woo. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yes, sir. And we got hey, some things. And I'm to certainly talk about. Gla- certainly glad Niagara is helping us out with this thing as they always do. It's awesome to have them on board with us. And Nate, there is so much to talk about on a busy week. And last week we had highs and lows, Nate. All highs this week, baby. All, all highs. highs. All highs. All highs, man. Your Rangers. John, yeah. your Rangers fan. Your Rangers. Your Rangers. Your Rangers. John, do not. Do not wait. Just fill us in. Get us all excited on why these Rangers are going to sweep these. Houston, who? <laughs> yeah, Houston, what? Yeah. So I got to start back in that Baltimore series, right? Yes, because sir. I was, the, look, at this point, the Rangers have had only one home game in the playoffs. They've won mm. seven in a row. They've only had one home game. They won it decisively against Baltimore and, and swept the Orioles out in three games in that five game series. It was unbelievable to watch not only what the team did that day at Globe Life Field, Nate, but to watch that crowd. And I loved, I loved what happened before the game. Bruce Bochy said, wow, Baltimore was really on fire. I hope the Rangers fans can get there. And I'm kind of (laughs) like, hey, 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 fear not, man. I've been there before when Rangers fans get fired up. And, you know, anybody, DFW, you know, Cowboys fans, when the Mavericks win, right, the Stars, right, these fans will get fired up. And they did. They brought the noise that night. The roof was closed, even though it was a nice night. Nate, that place was deafening. And the the (laughs) Rangers, typical of what they've done throughout these playoffs in that game against the Orioles they scored early and they pitched great and it was just phenomenal to see Nathan Evaldi who struggled down the stretch after an injury has just come alive in the playoffs and um, and Jordan Montgomery has been Jordan Montgomery so man it's just been so much fun to watch this team and to watch them win that first series it was their first series win since way back in 2011 when they mm-hmm. won a couple of series to get to the World Series right um, yes they hadn't won a playoff series since 2011 now they've won two series technically and they got a shot at winning a third against these astros nate i know you're fired up tell me this i want to ask this the right way you know do the rangers have a real shot or are they just on a natural roll. I mean, because baseball is up and down, and I know the playoffs is different because it's different in every sport. But if they were able to, say, win the next uh, two out of three, are they just going to sweep them? What are – and this is looking ahead. We have that right to do that as fans. Yeah, we do. We can do and that. And that's yeah. They can't. Do yeah. they really – do they really have a chance? Do they have enough pitching? That, that is the key. Do they have enough pitching and a, and just the timely enough bats to to do this, to do this, to walk through the Astros, who's been the best in baseball? I understand the Braves on the other side was been good the last few years, but they have the Astros have been consistently the best in baseball. And I know you're not counting them out, but do the Rangers have that oomph, that that swag, that that we got it going on uh, enough to get there? 
You know, we've said it in all sports, Nate, and your uh, Super Bowl 27 team uh, might be the best example, right? The first right. one that won the yes. Super Bowl in Pasadena. At, at some point, it's not necessarily the best teams that win. It's the hottest teams that mm. win. And in that first run to the Super Bowl, you guys might have been sort of hotter than you were best. Bu- Buffalo right. was probably a better team, and you yeah. beat them 52-17, to 17, right? Right. And right, I, think, right. <laughs> I think that's what the Rangers are going through a little bit right now. They're a hot team. Are they the best team? You know, you can't, to your point, you can't count these Astros out yet. They're not even flinching. They're down two games to none, and they're like, eh, all right, let's go win up there. And and the funny thing about this Astros team, Nate, they were, they were under 500 at home. What right. you always say in baseball is you got to win two out of every three at home and right. go 500 on the road. The Astros were under 500 at home, 40 right. and 41, just one game under, but still under 500 at home. And then and then they were obviously well over 500 on the road because they had the exact same record as the Rangers, but won it based on head-to-head competition, won the division, that is. But now it's head-to-head all over again. And I will say this, don't think the Astros were rolling over but still the rangers are up two games to none there's only been three teams in the history of baseball playoffs that have lost after leading two games to none in a seven game series so you know the chances are pretty good that the rangers do move on but here's the thing nate right philadelphia is also hot (laughs) <laughs> Philadelphia hasn't lost in these playoffs either. The Phillies, and they were in the World Series last year, and they lost to another Texas team called the Houston Astros. Oh, wait a minute. You think Philly wants to lose to two Texas teams two years in a row, especially <laughs> right. when one of them is in the same city with the Dallas Cowboys, who they hate? No, right, they do not right. want, right? So now... Can they win it all? I don't know. I remember in 2010 with this Rangers team, they beat the Yankees in the right. American League Championship Series. Man, they overcame the you know, the evil empire and beat the Yankees. And we were all like, this is it. They're going to win the World Series. And right. here came the San Francisco Giants, managed by who? Bruce Bochy. Wow. And the Giants had not won a World Series. I think at that time, Nate, I think it had been since the 50s. Wow. Since the Giants, where they were they were in New York still, or you know, Brooklyn or wherever the heck they came from. They were there <laughs> still when they last won the World Series. And they won the World Series in just five games against the Rangers. Uh they won it on the Rangers home field, which was which was painful. Um so yeah, you're right. Even if they're still hot. And and even if they're streaking in the right way, they might run into another team that's hot and as good or better and possibly more motivated. So we count on nothing. We just keep riding this ride because it sure has been fun so far. What what is it that besides the continuity and the belief factor, which is huge, what is it about the Astros that antagonizes the Rangers or that may have a chance to uh, come in, upset the Rangers. What is that stumbling block that they possess? I think in the case of the Astros, Nate, it's mostly just their experience, right? They've been to seven straight American League Championship Series. They've won a couple of World Series already. So they, uh, you know, they lost a World Series already. So they know exactly what it takes to get here, whereas most of the Rangers don't. Now, Corey Seager does. Corey Seager was there, but three years ago with the with the uh, Dodgers right there at Globe Life Field, the Dodgers won it in the COVID year, uh, you know, here at our ballpark. So, um, some players do, most players don't. And so you have to rely on the intel that you have from the guys like Corey Seager, the guys who have been there and done that. And, you know, another guy on the team who isn't playing much, but who's done it is Will Smith. In fact, right. he was with the Astros last year. So <laughs> right. you've got guys on this team who have been there, but, but you've got everybody on the Astros who has been there and their and experience as you know Nate experience is the best teacher so they've yes. got that experience now you know this young talent could prevail and i hope it does and i think it will i do i think it'll Much prevail like against our first the Super Astros Bowl, huh? 
Yeah. Huh? Much I, like our first Super Bowl. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Nobody thought you guys were going to beat the Bills. Was that their – that was their third in a row, wasn't it? Right. They had lost to the Giants. They had lost to the Redskins maybe. And then yeah. here they came and lost two, and lost two to you. <laughs> I yeah, think it's I the forgot. commanders. Yeah. Uh, back, then they, back then they were the Redskins. <laughs> yeah, you, you, not allowed you, to say that, am I? Yeah. You know, yeah. it just amazes me. You know, we got some uh, Ranger fans that work over at the Star and how just uh, they're true Ranger fans. They ain't the casual guy like me. They ain't the passerby. They 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 are locked and loaded, man. And they they trying to figure out how to get tickets. And I and I and I hate to tell them like, man, I can get some tickets, you know. But I'm not, you know. But I don't want them to get mad at me because you know I I, I can't use my my inside scoop, which is you. <laughs> to get tickets. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I tell people like this right here, and I'll say this every show that the Rangers are uh, up and going and when the Mavericks get hot and when our hockey team get hot, uh, I'm just looking for great things for the uh, sports fan in Dallas, man. And I just appreciate the, the sports fan in Dallas because if you get hot, uh, we, you know, for all those years that we maybe maybe haven't supported you, if you get hot and start winning, the stores will be empty because all the paraphernalia will be gone. No, yes. no doubt about it. No doubt about it. It's really it's a fun aspect of not just here. You know, people ask me. I remember when I first moved here from Detroit. People say, you know, well, what is Detroit? Well, you know, they fancy themselves hockey town. But right. back in the early '80s, when the Tigers were winning all the time, all the time, suddenly, you know, Detroit was a baseball town, a town right? Yes. You know, I mean, it just it, hey, they're a, they're like every town. They're a winning town. Now, Dallas is a little bit different under any circumstances. That cowboy, you know, that right. America's team specter is going right. to be there over this town. But, yeah, they love. We got enough people around here who love baseball and who love hockey. And, by the way, the baseball and hockey teams, you know, the, the, the stars could be extremely good this year. Right, right. With the baseball team has proven they are. And now maybe, Nate, maybe the cowboys are heading back in the right direction. Oh, man. Yeah. That- that was a that was a rough one yesterday. You can see the residue uh, from that loss they had the week before. You can see uh, we had some lucky breaks, and then we made some plays, some timely plays. It was just it was a game, and and, and Rad, I promise you, I did not feel good about this. You know, I've never picked the Cowboys to lose, and probably never will. But man, if just secretly, I was telling people, I'm worried. I'm worried. Is you know, is Dak still got it? Is it, can he just do enough? Or can the defense make a play here? I mean, it was an ugly game. You could tell when they scored early. I was like, oh, I, I just wanted to kind of go to bed and go to sleep and hope it yeah. was, you know, hope we win when I wake up. And but, I, I, you know, I stayed with it and it was a gritty game and it was a game that the Cowboys, I think, put them in check that because you know they they have one loss and then come back and won again, and all that is good and well. But you know, normally when they come back and win, they win big. But yesterday they did not win big. They barely won. It was a lot yeah. of questionable calls. A yeah. lot of uh, players making plays are not making plays. Guys lining up wrong. Uh, offensive line not playing well. But the Cowboys found a way to tough it out. And uh, my hats off to them. So, and you know that you talk about the beginning of that game, um, and you know they defer. Cowboys get the ball three and out. You know, Chargers rush right down the field and score, and and there were a couple penalties in there. They had about thirty more yards they gained on that on that drive that were called back. So you know, it looked like it was going to be ugly. And all I could think about was what you talked about last week, Nate, which was after teams lose to the 49ers, mm. their record was one and fifteen. I'm like, I'll be dang, the 49ers are going to beat the Cowboys twice right. too, right? right? But to their credit. The Cowboys came back, and I really believe the defense did set a tone. To me, Nate, the run defense for the Cowboys looked really, really good last night. In fact, maybe the best we've seen it look so far this year. Uh, you know, they, they, they couldn't, the, the uh, Chargers couldn't run the ball at all. The, and this is, and they had Austin Eckler, and they got the, the other kid yep. uh, that is a nice running back. Uh, this is what I, I continue to tell people. Uh, we've had this problem for over 10 years now, not being able to stop the run. And I tell people, 
believe it or not, stopping the run makes a team one-dimensional. Now your job as a defensive coordinator is not as hard because you can set your defense for one or, one or the other, run or pass, but you can't continually set your defense for both. And uh, Jonathan Hankins, uh, Osa, number 97, uh, Demarcus Lawrence, they did a hell of a job, especially with Leighton Van Der Esch being out and Marquise uh, Bell coming in and uh, Clark coming in and, and doing what they did. They did a hell of a job of keeping Austin Eckler and that bunch under wraps versus the run. Yeah, I thought that was spectacular too, and and uh, I thought Bell, you know, he was a surprise. You know, they put him, you know, into the, into the middle of that defense, and I thought he did a great job playing. I think he had seven tackles and yes. a couple of passes broken up, so he had a really good game. And then um, what I what I really thought was fun, your boy Troy, our boy Troy, he's on the broadcast saying, you know, it's interesting. We haven't seen a lot from Micah Parsons yet. Bam! Not two <laughs> seconds later, Micah Micah had a sack. So oh, there he is, you know. Let, let, let me let, let let me tell you something. Yeah, that has that play, that play right there. Not since the first time we played the Tampa Bay Bucks, where uh, we lost to them. But Mike made some plays on fourth mm-hmm. down. He made mm-hmm. some plays on third down, and, and I mean, talking about in, I'm talking about in the red zone uh, against Tampa Bay a couple of years ago. Not since then. Has he made a bigger play? This is this is what I try to tell people. When you go to comparing this kid to the greats that I've played against and we've seen in past history, that is now now I, I would I would say, hey, that's a Lawrence Taylor play. Mm-hmm. That's a Reggie White play. Well, what makes that a play? The situation. They could have tied the score. They could have went ahead. But no, Parsons come through a double team, splits it, sacks the quarterback, rattles him. The next play, they get pressure on the quarterback. And all of a sudden, Gilmore is coming up with an interception. Those are game-changing, impacting, legend-building plays. Not the 12 sacks that you got in the first quarter where, you know, the game didn't mean anything. But when the game was on the line, when Troy and Joe Buck is getting, you know, getting serious about it, you can hear their voices go down to a whisper mm-hmm. like yours do sometime, Brad. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so when you're getting excited right before you explode, and say, oh, that's a sack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, boy, that was exciting. Excited right there. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Man, it it was. It really was awesome. But but I love the fact that so basically we're talking other than that very first drive, which is the only touchdown the, the Chargers scored, the, the defense really stepped up. And yes. I think we were all pretty disappointed in the performance of the defense against right. the 49ers. Yes, we were. And 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 that's what you know, when you a uh, hell uh when you when you get rushed for 170 yards uh your quarterback throws like uh he's Joe Montana the second coming of Joe Montana <laughs> you, you know guy you got uh you know, Brandon Ayuk just running around like he Jerry Rice or uh, young John Taylor it just it was just it was just devastating because our defense even though we're missing digs we didn't see nobody being able to just I constantly beat at our defense the way it did. And uh uh and they 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 came out, they were gritty, and like I said, they they held uh for the most part, uh a lot of people I, I'm not giving up on Justin Herbert. I mm-hmm. I, I, I am mm-hmm. telling you, he was off. He he threw eleven targets at Keenan Allen. Three he missed, and they were mm-hmm. double moves. Two mm-hmm. On uh, Bland and one on Gilmore, and they were touchdowns. Wow. But yeah. by the Cowboys continue to put that constant pressure on him all during the game, this is what I tell people. When you were bringing pressure the way the Cowboys were bringing the pressure, and, this, and he was throwing under duress a lot of the times, when you sometimes, when you had that easy pass, you still got them little ghosts in your mind, and he was off. He was off. Yeah. People said, "Where his yeah. finger? Nah, his finger was that was on the that was on the left hand. Left he throws hand, yeah. with that right. He throws with that right." So, uh, great game by the Cowboys defense. And I want to say this, Rad, right, right away. 
I, I call for this and I'm going to call for this and I'm going to call for this. I need for Dak to stay that player that plays with his instincts. I understand the play is being called. I understand you have to make reads. I understand you have but play with your instincts. When, when it's not there, take the, the liberty yardage that you can gain with your legs. Take it. I'm not saying turn into a Lamar Jackson or turn into the great Michael Vick. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying your instincts has always been good to know when to run the ball. Quit with all that pumping and faking, you know, because when you do that right, the teams know you're not going to run the ball. But when you just take off and run, they see you run the ball and you slide like you've been doing, being smart. Because when we have a complete football player who throws a football, we're going to always be in games. I'm not saying we're not going to. We're going to win every game, but we will always be in games when Dak is playing with his instincts. He played great. He, he didn't have any interceptions, which was a nice rebound from the week before. Using that, you know, using his legs, he scored that touchdown. Yes. That was the thing of beauty on fourth mm-hmm. and one. That was really fun to watch. And here's what I love, Nate. So yes, we talked about our concern last week about there being this separation, you know, between him, you know, and certainly C.D. Lamb. And and um, C.D. Lamb hold had on, his John, best Hold on, game. John. Hold on, John. John is fit to tell you something. Okay, I listen closely. Tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Hey, C.D. Lamb had his best game, Nate, and I think yes. that speaks to that leadership quality that we see from Dak Prescott. We, you're out, out there way more than I am, but that, that we've heard about, you've seen it, that that is a leader and that is a man who can get people to follow him and rather than him and you know him and C D Lamb staying way out here like this, yes, man, they're back together again. And you can't have a team when two stars are like this. That's you right. can't have a very good one. Bring them back together. Bring them back together. And I thought that. And Brandon Cooks, we saw him get off for the first time. They hey, gave him an end around. You got to use that dude's speed. Fourteen, Nate, fourteen I, I yard game. See. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Speak on it, man. Keep speaking. Don't stop. You rolling. You preaching, <laughs> bro. You preaching. Well, that, the whole thing is, you know, we've also talked about this. This Texas Coast offense is not uh, um, it's not, you know, a well-oiled machine yet, right? It takes right. more time to get something rolling. I, I'm not sure we still know what exactly it's going to look like, but if it looks more like that, where there's more people involved, right, where Cooks yes. is involved, where where you know, C.D. C. Lamb is, is involved to a point that even satisfies him, right? Yes. If you're getting more and more receivers involved, then – um, hey, you know, that is where this thing needs to be, and that is how you keep that defense off balance. Oh, and guess what? You can throw a little pass over here to Pollard, and he'll go yes. for 60 on you, Nate. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I just, I, I love it. Uh, and, again, and, and like I said, uh, where, we got, where we got lost is we, 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 we asked a lot of Dak, and our offensive line did not play well mm-hmm. amongst us. All okay. the positives yeah. I thought yeah. for Dak yeah. and for our wide receivers, our offensive line didn't play well. They're not picking up uh, the game to tackle in stunts and uh, games, you know, the little twist that they call it, you know, where the tackle come first and the end come around. They're not picking these things up uh, well. Uh, I think Zach Martin is a little banged up. Uh, everybody forget that Steele is coming off, even me, uh, forget that he's coming off of ACL. And uh, he's back early, so we got to deal with that. Tyron Smith is not the same Tyron Smith of uh, 10 years ago, four years ago, even three years ago. So he's going to have his days. Uh, now, Tyler Smith is a young stud, but he got to learn. Now, you know, sometimes you got to get them hands inside, and sometimes you got to learn how to release a guy. You know, uh, he's still physical. He's still mean. The artist is still trying to come off of a, a hamstring, but they – have to use this off week, this off week here to make sure that they get as healthy as they can be because you can't stumble. We were fortunate that the 49ers stumbled against Cleveland. We were fortunate that uh, Philadelphia stumbled in their situation. we glad of that, but you don't want to depend on other teams uh, losing to get you where you need to be. You want to depend on yourself and winning. 
Yeah, and so yeah, right. You've got a bye week, then you've got the Eagles and the Rams. So the, this tough stretch of games continues, even though there is a bye week to get healthy in there. Nate, you mentioned the offensive line. Uh, that's another thing, and and most everybody who has analyzed this game has said it. That offensive line was not great last night. We know Nate that Father Time is undefeated. Yes. So um, you know, does there come a point? Even if it's in the middle of the season where you have to say, wow, Tyron Smith, you're you're not our left tackle anymore. I mean, like they feel like they've got the line together right now as they want it for the last couple of games. But even with that group, um, it just hasn't looked that great. It has. They're going to have to continue to work together. And I think they're going to ride with with Tyron to the end of the year. But I I, I tell you, uh, last year – I begged for him to get a uh, offensive lineman, uh, and this is crazy what I'm gonna say, but I, I'm gonna say it. I don't always believe that you have to have a first or even a second round guy, but the Cowboys have been so spot on with their first picks for being offensive lineman. But next year, if uh, if if the opportunity arises, get that guy in the first. But if they don't, the second, the third, the fourth, I gotta be lineman. Got to the teams that stay successful once they have a quarterback, running back or slash wide receiver, they stay in the game because they have offensive linemen. They stay in the game because they have offensive linemen. The one year where Mahomes was running all around during the Super Bowl, you knew as soon as the season was over with, that general manager, Andy Reid didn't have to, they, you know how to cook, they go to the coach and say, what do you think we need? They didn't have to even say it. They just went to sign an offensive lineman. If yeah. you think that you, want, if, that you want to be successful every year, you have to always be churning the mill for offensive linemen. And even though people are laughing at Denver, because they went out and signed two offensive linemen once free agency hit last year. Watch Denver in another year. Watch Denver once Sean Payton get his legs up under him and get to start building his team. If you have an offensive line and you have the, you have your quarterback, you can win games. You can win games, and I try to tell people that all the time. If you have an offensive line that is good, you don't have to have a great, just good and you have your quarterback, you can win games. Yeah, and that is a that is the thing. We if we learn nothing else from Jimmy Johnson uh, at the very beginning of your run with the Cowboys, it's that you have to build these teams from the inside out. Right, yes. it's offensive yeah. and defensive line. Yes. You know that second or third year here, Jimmy takes Russell Maryland first. We're like Russell Maryland, boy, that turned out pretty well, didn't it? Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, because it's a certain toughness, you know, that you can establish. And and I hate to tell people, but I hate to bring up this name, but what does the leaders in the NFC have that's in common? The Forty Niners have an offensive and defensive line. Philadelphia has that offense and defensive line, and they're always trying to get better at those positions because they have their quarterbacks. When you have your court, and even when you don't, you still can be competitive. The 49ers once set on their quarterback. We have their quarterback right here with us. Yeah. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? They gave up three picks for him. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is a second round pick. So when you find you, you know, but they already had the players in place, the O-line and defensive lines in place. It's like I, I want to have an investigation on the Philadelphia Eagles because I think they done cut a deal with Georgia. Just like, hey, them. just yeah. – we need all your yeah, defensive line. Send, yeah, that's how good Georgia is. You just send them on that play. They start yes. in the NFL taking teams to Super Bowls. So right. some of the fun stuff from right. uh, from last night's game. Did you see on, on the broadcast before the game, who's down on the field? Yucking it up and laughing and kind of jabbing at each other. But yeah. Jimmy yeah. Johnson and Jerry Jones. Yes. Nate, one of my kids looked at me and said, I thought they hated each other. I said, no, no, they don't hate each other. But that, that was interesting to see, wasn't it? 
Yeah, I tell you, that's right here. Your kid is right. They knew the cameras was on them, so they yeah. sit there yucking it up. <laughs> yes, they sit there yucking it up. Because if they was loving each other, why is Jimmy not in the ring of honor? Well, that's a great question you asked, Nate. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. And then I saw, I saw, I think I saw it on Twitter. Your boy Mike, uh, Michael Irvin, was up in the suite with Jimmy, and you yeah. know Michael. I mean, you know, he just go. That's his. That's his college coach, Nate. Yeah, too. Yeah, so he boy. was loving on since seeing some Jimmy yeah. up there. Yeah, so I, it was great. Did you see the fan doing yes. the game? Oh the, the, my uh, gosh! The uh, the little lady man. Yes, yes, she was into it. My she can come be a my, Texas Ranger fan easy, huh? I swear to God. <laughs> and my son, because of uh, Ladanian Tomlinson, right, you know, right. back in the day, and my right. son had met him and stuff yeah. back when he was at TCU. So he was he was always a kind of a closet Chargers fan, right? right? So right, he always right. loved the Chargers. Man, the minute they moved from San Diego, he was like, nope, I'm out on him, right? And right, so then right. he sees that lady, he goes, wow. There really are some Charger fans in L.A., yeah, you know, because yeah, he thought yeah. they all stayed back in San Diego. But <laughs> that that lady, yeah, no, that was that was some that was uh, great. meme that was worthy great. video right there. Yes, Nate. But yes. it shows. Hey, it shows the um, emotion, right, that people feel about this thing. And we and we know I mean, we know it so well and we've talked about it. That's the same emotion you feel. And I yes. know it had to just shower you. Yeah. As a player, especially to know that there were people up there and out there that cared that much. Yes, sir. It always and and you know I didn't always have this love and respect for the fans that I I see it, man. And it never dawned on me how people would come to the Ranger Spring training, how they would save their money so they could have this week with the Rangers, or they would save their money so they can have a few days with the Cowboys. I don't know how it is in basketball and hockey. Can you bring in the fans the way baseball and football does? But, oh, man, it's just, you know, and you listen to these people, or you see these people, man, you'd be like, yeah, we've been waiting. They'd be at practice at 6 o'clock. But, sir, we don't get out here at 8, 9 o'clock. I want to be first in. I want to be the first in. I want to get the best seat. I want to stand up against the – stand up on the fence for two hours and be the first. I'm like, bro, you bet me. You are better <laughs> yeah. than me. <laughs> yeah. I just want to get back in that bed. As, you know, I'm a player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, man, it's been great uh, having another chance to chat with you, Nate. Rangers and Cowboys. We'll get into so many more topics over the course of our duration yeah. doing our fun podcast together. But, the uh, but it, man, the Rangers, they're demanding that yes, we sir. talk about them. They are the hot item. Yeah. And like I say, we have Ranger fans in the facilities at the Stars. And, and I saw a couple of them. You know, a uh, uh, dude named Kyle Yeomans, while we doing a show, he got a little TV over there. I'm like, Kyle, I'm watching you now. Oh, no, no, I just looked at a little yeah. bit. I didn't look yeah. at a lot. And he doing the TV show. Where, you know, we doing our little talk shows and everything. And he, I'm like, wow, he is a Ranger fan, man. Wow. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It's fun. And and so uh, you can, you, we can, let me okay. tell you something. You can yeah. count on the fact that we are going to talk uh, uh, more Rangers at yes. least next week, and with any luck, the yes. week after that. And if we talk about it, if we're talking about the Rangers in two weeks, Nate, they're, they're in the, the Super promised Bowl. land, man. They're in the World they're Series. They're in the Super Bowl. I don't yes, know about the World are. Series, That's right. but they're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic, man. We appreciate Niagara yes. so much for helping us out. Nate, I appreciate you as always. It's been so much fun, and I know we'll be talking again next week. Because I know by next week you'll say, let me, let tell, me tell you, you something. something. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, Niagara, we flushed another one. <laughs>